Okay, um, we screen the PC that it tells you to put constraints in the model itself. So the user model, we put constraints to it, and every time that the screen is going to map some data to it, it's going to check those constraints. So that those annotations come from validation API. Also, this is all part of this is also part of that validation that Spring MVC allows us to do. JSP has um, has tags that allows you to do programming with it, like for loops, if statements. So they are called JSTL, and so that's the dependency for that. This is a something extra that. Uh, so I teach. You guys don't care about it, but I know. But I teach um, um, <laughs> more high-end stuff like creating your own annotations and creating your own constraints for models. That so this task allows you to do that. Uh, and so, but here is the Spring MVC that you need in case you wonder. Those five is the one that you need for Spring MVC. The first five that you have in there. Everything else is extra. But it's good to have. All we get from the maybe in repository? Mm -hmm. All of them are all there. Everything is there. Just sometimes you need to know like what are you looking for. Like if you want to do some type of work, then you look for hey what's the jar for this type of stuff. That's how you look that up. For instance, what's the happening by the data for? The Hibernate is um, uh, here. It's, it's also it's also for the validation for constraint validation. So they it, it they all just bring annotation space and more configuration file that you can use that I already made for you. Okay, so. Now that we have this set up, this is something that I like to do um, because it's a lot easier for me. So after I have configured my form XML for the dependencies, you guys are gonna have it available to you guys. What I like to do next is if you guys don't have it, I suggest you guys get it. It makes my life easier. So I go to help. And this is only one a one time thing, okay? And I go to Eclipse Marketplace. And this is a Spring IDE tool that just generates Spring for configuration files for me. So the tool is Spring IDE. Search for that bad boy. And there you go, that one is the one that I, that I use. You can tell because it always says AKA Spring IDA and Spring Tool Suite. So you can download that. You know, it's just a normal lab download, just like the testing G part. Download that, it's gonna ask you to install anyways, restart Eclipse. What you're allowed to do after you create, you install that tool, is that you're gonna have Spring MVC options so you can look it up you know if you downloaded it correctly if you go to pre window preferences and then spring should be here in the window right so that's how you know you, you install it correctly but what what, is, what does that mean for your project is that you can give it um, spring tools and uh, what I like to do is enable no, add on Spring Project Nature. So what does that do? Is that this project is going to expect configuration files, going to expect controllers, going to expect beam files. So if I add that, nothing's going to change. But I have this option now. Right next to my web XML, I need to create what is called a Spring Beam configuration file or otherwise known as a front-end controller. So since my web XML is right next to the web INF, 
I'll create it there. Go to new, other, and then I have, because I downloaded that too, I have this available, spring, and what I'm looking for is spring bin configuration file. Go next. And now, this is the tricky part. In my web, web XML, I'm gonna configure this spring file to be mapped to a specific URL pattern, right? So only when I say admin forward slash something, this spring configuration file is gonna act on something, right? But the spring configuration file name is always whatever you want, dash servlet.xml. So in my web XML, you're gonna see me refer to this file as dispatcher, but the full name is dispatcher-servlet.xml, okay? So I'm gonna name it dispatcher that on, on dash servlet.xml, right? So that's the full name, but I, I had to refer to it just as dispatcher. The spring already attaches on uh, the dash servlet.xml to it. So after I give it that name, go next. And I need, I need to select three default classes in here. And this is also coming from the spring tool. That's what it allows me to do. I need to select beans. I need to select context. And go down, I need to select MVC. Once I select those three, and click finish, and that's what it does for me. All of that code, all of those interfaces, it pre-fills for me, so I don't need to do none of that. Now, I can just say, where do I want my, con my controller to be scanned from? Where is my JSP? How, do I, how is my view resolver looking for the JSP? So, before I do that, I need to configure it in the web XML. So, in the web XML, here, inside the web app, I need to fill out two things. A servlet. So the servlet name is, now this is how I refer to it, dispatcher. Right? The file is called dispatcher-servlet.xml, but I only refer to it as dispatcher. The class is something that I need to look for. So the class is something that I need to look for, and that is given by the Spring um, Mail Repository website. So you just search for the class for a front-end controller or Spring configuration file, and you will get it from there. I already have it, so I'm just gonna take it, copy and paste that here. So here's the class. So that's always the class. That's coming from the Spring MVC library. Framework, I'm sorry. Now, how do I get to, to this? How do I use this dispatcher? I need to set up a servlet mapping for this controller, this front end controller. Servlet mapping. And this servlet mapping is going to go for the servlet called dispatcher. And now what is the URL pattern that I want to want to invoke this dispatcher with? It's gonna be with forward slash admin, forward slash everything else. Okay, so once I go to my application name forward slash admin, forward slash whatever, I'm using the dispatcher now. And in the dispatcher, I'm gonna have mapping methods to handle those requests. 